today's video is by popular demand. That's right, you folks asked for it. Today we're going to follow the Hobbit and she's going to be canning some stuff up. Here we have Haricot Rouge and Haricot Blanc. If you're multi-bilingual, whatever you want to call it. Red beans, white beans. Um, so these are like kidney beans and these are like white beans. Now you can just, if you want to use these, you can just soak them and then cook them, don't you? Yeah. But the Hobbit cans them up in jars and then they're ready to go when we don't want to use them. So like kidney beans in a jar, you don't have to do, do a whole lot and mess about and they're good to go. Haricot Blanc, she's been doing these with a baked bean sauce and they are fantastic. They're good to go, they're in the jar, tip them out of the jar into a saucepan, heat them up bish bash bosh and job is a good one so we're gonna follow her along she's gonna be using the presto pressure canner i don't know the little one or the big one i don't know it depends on how far all right but um yeah so we shall see how she gets on you might learn something today who knows So as you can see, she's put the red beans in the jars. Don't fill them right up. We'll put goes to about a third full because they're going to swell up, and if you put half too much in, they'll make the jar explode. So she's put the beans in, and she put a quarter of a teaspoon of salt in there as well. So the next step is she's just boiling the kettle up, and then she's going to put some water in these jars and put the lids on. So when you're putting water in the jars, half an inch to an inch of head space, so from the top. You can see them crinkling already. Can you see that from there? Might be able to see it on the, on the screen. Get the soda coming in. Tight yeah. In America they call it finger tight, which means that finger, once that starts to slip, right. that's tight. So she's just put three litres of water in the pressure canner. She's used warm water out of the tap because it's going to be warm. The jars are going to be warm. If the jars were cold, you could put cold water in. So. Thermal shock. Thermal shock, they call it. We don't want none of that. No, because if you've got hot jars and cold water, they crack. Yeah. You have to explain it. No, sorry. Thermal shock. If you put hot jars in cold water, the jars explode. And vice versa. And vice versa. Versa Visa. We're learning. We're learning on the job. If 
you're wondering what she was doing then, she was making sure that the vent was clear. So if the vent's not clear, we have explosions in the kitchen. We don't want that. Also, while she was there, she was making sure that the seal was good. Because you want it to seal, otherwise you can't build up any pressure. Because she put warm water in it, she's put the gas on. She's going to bring it up to temperature slowly. You don't want to go too fast. At the moment, the top is on, so the top's sealed, but there's no weight on the top. Where's the compass weight, please? This isn't the magic one. No. This is the weight that comes with it. Now, depending on your elevation in the world, um, requires different weights for the pressure. Uh, this is a 15 pound weight, isn't it? This is a 15 pound weight. I did get her for Christmas uh, a, I can go and get it. Um, what do they call it? Uh, an adjustable weight. Yeah. So it's 5, 10 or 15, um, which works quite well on the small canner. So now we wait for this to get up to temperature and then we should see steam start venting out of this pipe. So that's to do that for 10 minutes and then you can put the weight on it. We shall come back to it when it's doing that. So here's the weight I bought the Hobbit for Christmas. Comes off. So you can have five pounds. Ten pounds. Fifteen pounds. Clever, isn't it? Um, I think the Hobbit says we need about 10 pounds. So we should take one of these off. And when we're ready, that can go on the vent pipe. Oh yeah. Now I'm not an expert on pressure canners, but I'll just relay what the Hobbit's told me. When it comes to the weights and the gauge, set your pressure with the weights rather than the gauge. Use the gauge as a guide because the, the gauge could become inaccurate if it's if it's starting to fail um, just use it as a gauge but mainly you want to be relying on the weights to get the correct pressure safety first and all that oh yeah you can see it if you just hold your hand up a bit there. higher a bit down a bit yeah so it's got to do that for 10 minutes. It's been going for a minute. You'll see the thing pop up if I leave it going like it is. Hey, it's just come up. That means it's locked. Right. Although we've not built up pressure, it's got hot enough in there and it's got enough pressure in there that I can't now open that. Right. It's a safety feature. Yeah. So if all goes well and you start building up a bit of pressure, that safety lock will pop up as we've just seen. Once that safety lock's popped up, you can't undo the lid until the, it, the pressure is dropped down enough um, that the safety latch goes back down. Um, so now it's venting out of the pipe. We have to leave it venting for 10 minutes. And then once that 10 minutes is up, we can pop the weight on. So the idea of it venting for 10 minutes is that it equalizes the temperature throughout the jar and obviously the canner so that all temperatures are the same in there before you put the weight on. And then once you put the weight on, it builds up pressure and it does its magic. Won't take long, especially not if I turn it back up a little bit. It won't take long if you, can you see the gauge? Yeah. You can see it start climbing.
There it goes. I'm it down then. I've never used it on this one, so... How many hours have we wasted sitting looking at jigglers and... So the jigglers start going, we're up to pressure. Now you can regulate the pressure by turning the temperature up and down. The, as I say, the gauge is just to guide the jiggler or the weight is what sets the pressure. So, you know, we're on 10 pounds of pressure here because of our elevation. Um, but yeah, you can adjust it with the, the temperature. So obviously you turn it up, it creates more pressure and the gauge will go up a little bit. Um, now the jigglers start going, we're gonna leave that for 45 minutes. The times vary for what you've got in there, what size jars. The Hobbit has said to me that these, these jars are 45 minutes. So we'll come back in 45 minutes when these have finished. Um, the difference between pressure canning and water bath canning is the length of time. Water bath canning takes double the amount of time that pressure canning does. So I've been reliably informed. But uh, as I say, this isn't a how-to video. This, we're just going through following The Hobbit. Um, the canner does come with a good set of instructions. You can get the instructions online as well on the Presto website. Uh, that's about it really. As I say, it's not how to, so don't take what we do for go as gospel because if it all goes wrong, you're not blaming us. So the Ho Hobbit goes online, a couple of groups she's on Facebook. One's Canon Rebels, which, you know, it's in the name, they're rebels. They're not pearl clutchers, basically. Apparently there's a lot of snowflakes online that say that Canon is bad for you. Uh, I think in America, are the, are the government really trying to clamp down saying it's not good for you, canning food and... Oh, they, nothing's good for you, the, unless it's commercial. Yeah, there's lots going on in, a, in, this, in over in the US. Um, government agencies getting involved on these pl different platforms saying that enough, this isn't good, you, uh, but you know, you can buy preserved food out of the so shops. Anyway, there's another one which is Canning and Preserving UK, which she goes on. Gets a lot of information on there, asks questions, bits and pieces. But uh, canned food, it's bloody marvellous. We've had stuff down in the dungeon um, for months and months. We've brought it up, opened it up, cooked it or done whatever we want. It's, it's been fine. Some, the potatoes taste a little bit funny, but that could be due to our potatoes. Not quite sure what's going on, but we're trying a different brands this year, potatoes. Aren't we? Yeah, I've got Desiree and some kind of russet French version. So, in theory, how long will canned goods last for? Canned goods will start to lose their colour and some of the, the nutrients after about 18 months. Alright. But they will be edible as long as the seal lasts. So canned goods will start to lose their colour and their nutrients after about 18 months. But they'll be edible for all the time that the seal stays good on the jar. So, in theory, 30 years if the seal stays good. So all... People on the Rebels group who inherited stuff from their grandma that 
they yeah. So when you go to your supermarkets and you buy stuff and it's got a best before date, that best before date on sealed goods is quite often the best before date of the materials that it's preserved in, isn't it? Plastic. Like plastic, the water, the water that's in there and all that kind of thing. The actual food <coughs> would probably be fine. I mean, you know. It's also, it's a best before, it's not an expiry. Yeah, it's a best before, which with canned goods, best before is before 18 months. Then you inflate your colours and your nutrients tend to go a little bit, but they'll be good for years and years. So. We'll, we've eaten stuff out of our cupboards, but. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back in 45 minutes anyway and see what the next process is. That's been going for 45 minutes. Sun Hobbit has turned the heat off now. But we can't just open it up because there's 10 pounds of pressure in there and it would go all over the kitchen. So we have to leave it now, let the pressure drop. The safety lock will go, oh. Yeah, safety lock. The safety lock will go down first. Then you can take off the weight. Leave it for a few minutes. The Hobbit normally leaves it for a few minutes after she's removed the weight, just to let any excess out, let it equalize inside. And then the lid will come off. So we'll see that in a few minutes. We'll have to wait for this pressure to come back down. See, I'm still boiling. Mm -hmm. Et voilà. So that is how the Hobbit cans red beans so they're kidney beans you can see in the jars they've swollen up quite a bit uh, a lot of people cook them before they can them but then from our experience you've done that and they've gone really mushy they're haven't really they mushy, yeah. because you're cooking them twice in effect once you've you put them in something yeah well. so this way um they just swell up while you're canning them and then when you cook them they're, they're fine so you're only doing them sort of twice. Whereas if you cook them beforehand, you're sort of cooking them three times. But uh, yeah, so these will, we've heard the lids pop in. They all quite, they do that. When you get them out of the thing, the lids all suck in, pop, lovely jubbly, you know, it's sealed. 
Um, smell red beans. Because I think sometimes you do get the jars siphon a little bit, but that's to be expected. But there you go, two thumbs up. We've got 13 jars of red beans, kidney beans, whatever you want to call them. Chilies, curries, whatever. So yeah, we was going to do the white beans, but we're going to do them tomorrow. I won't bother videoing that because it'll be the same as this video. But um, yeah, so we, we do it with the beans and the chickpeas and all that kind of thing. They're in jars, portion sizes. They're ready to go for when we want to do some cooking. So as I say, this isn't a how-to video. It's, oh, and another one. Um, this is just how The Hobbit does it. And I've had people asking, oh, I'd really like to see a video on your canning. So there we go. That's it from me and the Hobbit over there. Give us a wave, Hobbit. It's bye for now.